Are you valuable? I'm a graduate. That's not what I ask you. Are you valuable? I have three degrees. That's not what I'm asking you. Congratulations. Are you valuable? To be valuable means that what you have to offer in the table of life is needed and useful. Needed and useful. Is there a demand for what you think you want to do? Name is Asitonka Agri Abba and channel is called Asi Darling because I'm such a damn. <laughs> And welcome back to my YouTube channel, Trevor Asidali. Thank you guys so much for clicking once again. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And to all my OGs, you know what to do. Comment down below. Let me know. Gang, gang. Told you guys I was going to do a video about, you know, how to do PGWP and all of that. When I saw this update from my school, I was like, you know what? Perfect timing. I'm going to be reading from the slides that they used. I'm going to also be attaching it to um, the description box. Please make sure to check it out if, you, if you're in Seneca because some of the things as to maybe downloading your transcript and the portals to use um were explained there but for those of you that are not in seneca maybe you can get other informations that you need from it so i'm going to be reading that um guys make sure to like this video share it and let us get our likes up okay thank you all so much in advance all right so the first thing we are looking at here is what is PGWP? I get some questions where people are asking because there are so many acronyms. When you start this Canada journey, there are so many acronyms you cannot. In fact, there's POF, PGWP, PRO, COPRO. Like you're wondering what is what. So it is not a foolish question when people get to ask what is PGWP. So PGWP is basically um, postgraduate work permit, mainly for people that come to study here. The work permit they get after their school okay so it's an open work permit you can work anywhere in canada with any or multiple legal employers the postgraduate work permit is not limited like when you get this work permit it's like somebody even from nigeria getting direct work permit is the same okay so um another important note it is a once in a lifetime work permit it's not extendable except of course um early expiration of your passport some people before they apply for pgwp um, maybe their passport has maybe a few months. Like me now, my passport is supposed to, my passport is supposed to expire, is it October? October next year or so. And my PGWP is still November something. So, so in between, yeah, I will have a period where I need to actually do my passport. So I'm looking towards maybe the moment is January. I'll have to start my process for my new passport just so I don't run into issues. So yes, in that case, or IRCC policy change, which they did early this year where they extended for some people. So it usually doesn't extend. Once in a lifetime means if I do a study um, one year course and I get PGWP and find out that, oh, I didn't get PRO, I go back to school. I can't apply for another work permit. After that, second going back to school is to my house. Do you get that kind of thing? So that's what they mean. They say, do all your studies first. Uh, to be eligible for a longer PGWP. So if you want to do two years, make sure you finish the two years. Somebody had asked once, what's the duration in between the programs? I think the max you can do should be like four months um, of non, like you're not schooling or anything between it. But if there's, if you can stay longer than that, le guys, let me know. But I think the max you can do is four months of non-study before you can be enrolled in school. Okay. So the duration for um, PGWP, it goes from eight months to three years and your status changes, of course, from student to worker. What are the requirements? Um, first of all, one of the requirements is that you have studied in a DLI. So those of you that are going to some schools, because it became so popular where people were going to Toronto management school or something, that school is not DLI approved. It is, it's not DLI approved at all. The courses are nice. It looks like what you studied and all of that. I feel like it's off key. It's off point. Wasting your money like that. So um, that one, you have to complete your study in a DLI approved school. Come point is the program is at least eight months long that leads to a degree, diploma or certificate. So some people were asking like, ah, see, ah, ah, you are finished now, now. Yes. My course was eight months and it led to a certificate. Third one is you need to be a holder of a valid study permit as at the time you're applying for PGWP, meaning your study permit should not have been expiring before you apply for PGWP. Understand that immediately after you graduate, you have a um, window of three months. Please do not in any way, shape or form, whether you have gotten job or you haven't gotten job, exceed that three months. They may reject you. You will run into issues. You don't want to waste that kind of money. Always make sure that within that window you have applied. And most importantly, don't allow your study permit to come and expire and meet you there because 
that's another forgotten case okay let me know your thoughts in the comment section the fourth one is you have maintained a full-time student status in all your study terms 66.67 percent except the final semester or scheduled break so you must have in, uh, maintained full time. So don't be doing that part-time thing. Most people come and ask, oh, should I do part-time study? It's cheaper. No, 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 no. Part-time doesn't, doesn't work here. If you want PGWP, full-time, please, full-time. Um, The fifth point is compliance with the conditions on your study permit. Some study permits, as you're getting it, they'll show you cannot work in a daycare, you cannot work in nursing facilities, you cannot work in this or that. Please be compliant. Some people's study permit do not allow them. In those days, they will not allow you to work outside campus you know so those conditions underneath when you get your study permit you see some spaces underneath read it very well and be compliant so um under here the road authorized to work off campus without a work permit make sure and you do not exceed your allowable work hours very important right now they have allowed you to exceed it but know that tomorrow now let it not be that three months from now or may somebody will watch this video and say but i see right now they say we should do 20 hours why are you saying on this video we should do 10 hours canada policies keep changing that's why even when i was doing video saying i was working full full time hey why are you working full time i thought it's 20 hours it's almost like they keep changing it you have to be on point okay guys let me know your thoughts um back to another slide that they wrote here now for this next one is the PGWP length. What's the length of your study and the length you are um, entitled to get? So let's say less than eight months, you're not eligible for PGWP. Eight months to two years, the same length of the study program. So eight months gives you eight months to one year. So two years and longer is three years work permit. Okay, very important. Below, within the margin of eight years to one year um one year, six months or one year, four months and all of that, they will give you the length of the course. So some people that do courses that are 16 months, 18 months, sometimes just pray that you even meet a God-fearing person. They might decide to round it up and give you three years, but some people will give you the length of the course. That's why um, some study PGWP dates can vary, okay? When to apply once your final grades have been published in Seneca, the moment you finish your last paper, you they will publish your final grades by the next day. So it is even important for you if you're schooling in any of these schools and you have a problem with your grade or you want to ask the lecturer to review your grades, do it fast because by the time they are collating results, it's done, it's done. Um, they repeated it here, 90 days to apply within Canada while your study permit is still valid. Very important. 180 days to apply outside Canada. You need to wait for approval later for your PGWP before entering. So those of you that will decide to go outside, ah, me, I don't even advise this one. Please just be within and do the 90 days, okay? So what are the documents? Of course, the form. When you start your application, IMM 5710. I think that's a form. I can't remember. See, first of all, a shout out to my housemate, Zodi. Like, shout out to Zodi. Shout out to Fumi. Shout out to my tribe because they know how much... I don't even know how I survive. Like, I hate filling forms. I hate... My PGWP, they are the ones that feel it. I was sleepy that day. I was so tired. So they say, I see, where is your passport data page? Is yeah. <laughs> For me, say, stand up now. Check this thing. Every single thing. Everything. She was the one that filled it and applied for me. So please, you should say a prayer. God bless Zodio in the comment section because I don't know how for do. Okay, so but you need your confirmation of your graduation later. This is for Seneca because it was easy for us to get it. The moment we finished, we just go to our student portal. We saw graduation later. Just go to download. We downloaded that later, had the letter. You will see official and unofficial transcript. Unofficial transcript is like um Statement of results. It can come out fast. So for those of you that want to continue working fast, fast, you can use this unofficial transcript and start your PGWP application process. Why? Because you want a situation whereby you don't have a lag, lag um, period. This unofficial transcript, while it is in, because the moment you apply for PGWP, they will tell you they have received it and okay, you can continue working for so so number of days while they work on your, you know, while they work on your um, application. That now gives you, especially those that are probably in healthcare or you have a full-time job that you cannot stop because the moment you get this, your completion letter, you have to stop working until you are approved for PGWP. That window, you cannot work 
oga that window you cannot do what you cannot walk so some people like a situation whereby the moment they get it they use that unofficial transcript and start the application so you also need your passport make sure to check for your expiry date a copy of your study permit if you you know the study permit you have you submit that digital photo most of us have digital photo because of course when we are applying for your study visa um proof of medical if you did your medical if it's applicable your application fee 255 dollars i think that's did I pay this money? Or more? This Canada cost too. I won't even lie to you people. There's a time, you, there's a place you get to and you won't even be, you won't even realize how much you have been paying. We pay two fifty five for cash down. two fifty five card and 85 for biometrics fee. I don't think I paid the 85 biometrics. So. Or maybe I did. Because in reach one point, I just say, use my card, use my card, use my card. But if it's, uh, um, if they ask for it, of course, then that's the only reason why you need to do that extra 85. But the PGWP application process is very intuitive. When you go through your portal, IRCC portal, instead of going through like maybe study, for those of you that did it yourself, go through the postgraduate, um, this thing. You also see points where you have to put in your DLI, the Seneca, whatever. Um, for us, remember this document is from Seneca College. Uh, Seneca graduation later, no need to request for it. It comes at no cost. It will be available on the date of your final grade, 12 noon, um, at your student portal. The official transcript is $11.30. Yes, you request through the student home immediately after your graduation is confirmed. You request for your official transcript. They showed, okay, how to request and all of that. For those of you that are in Seneca College, this is where it will benefit you. Now, the um, PGWP application steps, you have to create an account. So they also did the steps for you, which is fantastic. See, some schools are like that. In fact, most schools will do something like this, hopefully. But I'm only aware for my school, okay? I'm sure most schools have this kind of report so first you create an account sign in with your gc key and then go under the canada.ca immigration refugees whatever that's the main main account though. the step to answer the online questionnaire be sure to select postgraduate work permits when they prompt like what are you applying for not uh, citizenship not uh, you know it's fate but still at least now we are still in pgwp select postgraduate work permits then you upload your supporting documents the imm is a form it's an application form you need to complete that form is already inside so they say you complete that form use the guide um for that i am i am m 580 for help but that form you complete it. most of these things are very I would say they are very easy. It's just that some of us don't just like form. I don't like... I, I, I prefer to deal with the bigger things. The small, the tiny things are the ones that stress me out. Um, when you're done with all your submitting, put up your um, supporting documents, I don't know if I added... I don't think it was necessary to add... Um, I don't think I added my my account or something. You don't need to add account statement or all that. I don't think I added. It was when I was applying for my second um, study permit um, extension, my study permit extension that I applied, that I added my account um, statement from my bank in Canada here. But this one, I don't think I did. So another um, slide said important, important information during transition. Once your final grade is released, stop on or off-campus working under your study permit. Like I said, you stop it. You prepare for your application. You wait for these two documents, the graduation letter and the official transcript. You may need to wait seven business days to receive your documents. Please inform your employer. So those of you that probably have jobs already, if you know that this is going to be hard, you have to inform your employer on time and say, okay, I'm going to be finishing school XYZ time. Please note that for give me a week to sort out my documents at the back end before I can resume, okay? So you don't need to quit, but just ask for time of one or two weeks. This is a fantastic... Whoever prepared these slides, yeah, you know what you know what's on my mind. Fantastic. So what they now wrote to say, after, after submitting your PGWP, the current processing time inside Canada is 130 days. My own, I think I submitted my PGWP September. I got it December 1st, so September... October, November, September ending. I think I did like around 27th of September, um, October, November. And I got like first. So I, it took like two months, a little over two months. Okay. And that was for me, but 130 days. So 
that's like processing time this one is very far so the time is available on the site you can start working full time once you submit your pgwp application because they will even reply you and say okay we have gotten it you can start working so you um you can start working full time as long as you're eligible to work off campus without a work permit while you are studying so remember also you didn't work more than the hours because even when you put it you don't want a situation whereby you have issues if you have your valid study permit too very important and then you applied within 90 days of your graduation date remember i said that in within 90 days please do not exceed that three months the three months and if it's 31 31 31 make sure it's 90 days so don't go and do 31 31 you now apply on a day that is not really 90 if you apply on the 91st day you are failed though. so please calculate very important so um these are just like the things to note that of course you can start working full-time afterwards after receiving your pgwp um visit service canada to extend your sin exactly what i wanted to say when you get that your pgwp later for me because i was working and the pgwp was wasting time i already started work they kept asking and my um um sin was to expire november they kept asking like where's the updated one where's the updated one I tried, PGWP has not come out. I now remember that I had my study permit extension that I did not even use. But because I had the permit card and um, paper, I went back to Service Canada and I was able to use that um, study permit extension paper to get a renewed SIN, which was what I was able to use at the office because they are very strict to those SIN things and all of that. So you, um, if there's any need, you can apply for a new TRU V if necessary. So for those of you that probably want to leave the country, you need to apply for TRU V, the temporary resident visa. So that visa can help you to go out of the country and come back. Okay, so that's for it, um, for that part. Then your SIN number, of course, if you have applied for renewal of your work or study permit, the permit expires before a decision is made. You have a right to continue working. Although they said that I have right to continue working, even though they have not given me the new permit, I can continue working. My own office was insisting that I get a new one. So for some people, if your office is that strict, just pray or else you have to stop work. Okay. That's another thing because what they say is you must remain in Canada during this period where they are trying to decide your fate. It this maintained status formerly called implied status will remain until a decision is made by IRCC. Like now they have given me my work permit. I cannot use work permit to travel to Nigeria. I cannot travel. If I leave this country, I will not come back. Do you understand? Because leaving is, doesn't require visa. I'm going to Nigeria. I just showed my Nigerian um, kini passport. But coming back, if you don't have TRUV, you can't enter. So there's no point. Do you, do you understand? Guys, let me know. Your permit is not a visa. Very important for you to note that this... Um, Another point they said, yeah, this means you're allowed to work even though your SIN is expired. That's why I'm saying that when you apply and you're allowed to work till they make that decision. But some offices, the moment they know your ex, your SIN is about to expire, they will start worrying you. Uh, this personal experience. So find a way or you might have to just stop work. Um, the last one, after you receive, of course, your um, postgraduate work permit, you must apply for seen from service canada their service ontario but their service canada make sure to do that service canada okay all right guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section below so these are just things that you need to know and put in place for your pgwp note i am not an immigration consultant i use agent for myself even to do my own uh, pgwp i use housemate so if slow down with your question because if you ask me i'm gonna ask zodi <laughs> <laughs> if you ask me, I'm gonna ask Zodi. So I'm going out of my way to do this video. And thankfully, shout out to my school Seneca for this presentation because that is exactly what I'm using. Questions that I'm not so sure of, or questions that I feel like I, I don't feel confident in answering, I would let you know because I don't like to mislead people. Okay. Very important for you to have a unit. See, have a tribe of working people in this Canada. You cannot do it on your own. If you're a loner, information will fly past you. You need to be around people that have information part-time. Very, very important because there are many people that are almost at the wit's end of their work permit and they haven't even gotten a foothold yet. So it is very important for us to note this, okay? So please, oh, another thing they presented in our school was, of course, to enlighten people about the express entry category-based selection. This part is also a part that students can look at um, based on 
the areas that um, IRCC is focusing on, they just did a draw today for transport and it was around, I think, four four something 400 and something and some people got it i think they got like 600 people so the categories they were they are looking at for 2023 remember this is december we don't know if they will release new categories for next year but for this year french language healthcare stem trade transport and agriculture okay six under each of these ones there are different categories i'll try to see if i'll link also this category based stream so that you can click each each um um, subheading and read the things underneath to see if you qualify for any of those ones. That way you're better positioned for your PRO part, even as a student. Okay, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, if at all, any of this helped you, please let me know your thoughts. If you're preparing or you're in school already, I feel like for me, the best advice I'll give you is the, is what I used. You, you plan with the end in mind. So most times I think of the end what is the end goal for me? And I walk myself backward. That way I know that, okay, if this is what I want, if PRO is the goal or if citizenship is the goal, perfect. How do I get to citizenship? I need PRO first. Perfect. How do I get PRO? I have to even be in the pool. Have I, have I done my IELTS? Have I done my WES? Am I in the pool? Perfect. Now, I'm in school, right? Okay, good. I'm in school. What are the things I can do between being in school and finishing school that can put me on a better edge in terms of achieving that PRO faster? Those are questions you need to ask yourself. You need to be every day, do research, don't sleep, do research, do research. Some people are doing, what, what would I call this thing? Two-factor authentication. If PRO follow this line, come, I did. If PRO follow this line, come, I did. Just put yourself in such a way that you're not, you're not even too tied down. If you cannot get it in Ontario, what's your plan B? What is your plan B? And this plan B is not just futuristic plan. Is it something that you start, start planning now? Because some of these places, you have to even stay up to two years, one year. So if you, if you know that from the looks of things, it's getting hard. Before you finish school, you should be thinking of how you're facing the place you're facing. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. The key pointers, make sure to note that the moment you finish school, you have to stop working. The moment you get your graduation, you cannot work. Any work attached to your SIN will put you in trouble. Stop work until you have applied for PGWP. Now, the reason some people waste time to apply for PGWP is when they do not have jobs and they are trying to get a job like fast. So they use those three months to buy time. Please don't allow it exceed those three months. I preferably don't allow it exceed two months. Apply fast, fast. Two months, one week, you try. Just so that your village people don't mess up IRCC website and you find out that you cannot apply for months, for weeks, is going. So please, we don't want to mess up with that. So um, make sure, you remember, you cannot work till you apply. When you apply, they will give you the notice. Okay, you can work till you, you can continue working. Um, that continue working paper that they will give you, you can show your employer. Some employers take it. Some employers will still insist on a renewed SIN. Then you have to go back into a waiting game. If they give you some time, the moment your SIN is expired, you might stop work and wait till you get the actual permit sent to your address. Use that paper, go to Service Canada and you can get it. And it, it's funny enough, it's still your... It's still your SIN, still your number, but they just extend the dates. Do you understand? They extend the expiring date. So that way you know that, okay, you can still use that number for a longer period of time. Take that paper and show your employer. Now, note that your time has started counting. If you did a one-year course, it has started counting. If you did two years and you have three years, it has started counting. Time is of the essence. There's no point to just relax and forget yourself. What are we going to do right now? We, this is working. This is not you. You can no longer hide under the cloak of a student because by this PR time, um, by this PGWP time, you are a full time worker. So you have to think as a worker. You have to. It, the pressure is a lot more because your time is. It's not the when it has reached five months or six months or maybe half of your your stay and then you're now panicky. Okay. So very important for you to note that, guys. Let let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for having followed me through these different days. Hope you're enjoying the vlogmas series. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I remain your girl, Asi Darling. Please check out my other videos and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.